do not have any blood drawn from this affected arm. Do not let anybody take your blood pressure from this arm. No infusion, absolutely no injections, and no flying long distances without sleeve. Those are the 10 commandments given to the patient after surgery. And they are handed generation to generation, engraved in stone. And I don't know when they started, probably when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> so there was a survey done uh, in California it's called the Susan Love Army of Women. And these women online were asked a few questions. Among them were related to this topic. Were you advised to avoid medical procedures? 94% said yes. So um, those instructions are real and are, are, are given to the great majority of patients. And then they ask those patients, do you avoid medical procedures? And 90% said yes. So patients actually listen to these guidelines. And then they were asked whether those guidelines uh, negatively impacted their life with an anxiety. And 52% of patients said yes. So patients take these guidelines to heart. And they get upset when um, a nurse forgets and take the blood pressure from this affected arm. But also nurses take this to heart, and phlebotomists take this to heart too. Uh, when a patient is admitted in the hospital, you will find a sign on top of the bed, do not draw blood from this arm. But even if patients request to use this arm because the ipsilateral arm became fibrotic from the chemotherapy, and there is no more veins anymore. And the other arm is really fresh and can have, uh, can be easily, uh, the vein can be easily accessed. The phlebotomist will say, no, I cannot do that. So it's really very strong uh, uh, precautionary measures that people follow. So let me tell you about what we've done uh, in our program, we've talked about this yesterday. It's a screening program which started 10 years ago. Every patient with biopsy-proven breast cancer comes through the door, get her arm measured at baseline, and we keep following these patients after surgery, after radiation, and in each follow-up, as long as they come to the hospital. We um, uh, calculate our increase in volume using the parameter and using the relative volume change which we described yesterday. And when patients have bilateral, we use the weight, um, uh, uh, the WAC, the weight uh, change. And each time the patient comes and we take her arm uh, measurements, they fill up a questionnaire about quality of life, shoulder function, and uh, et cetera. But among these questions are questions about these um, precautionary measures. We ask about cording, but we ask them about blood draws on affected side, blood pressure on affected side, injections, flights, how long. So we collect these data, just observation, to see what's, what's happening here. So we, we did the first study to assess the impact of these precautionary measures on the risk of lymphedema. And we had, uh, a few years ago, 632 patients, the majority had unilateral cancer. Some of them had bilateral. We had 3,000 measurements. And we usually, we are very uh, precise when we take the arm measure, uh, measurements with the parameter. We do three, and we take the median. We only included women who had more than six months uh, follow-up. And we found that in the univariate analysis, there was no impact of taking blood draws or injections or blood pressure from 
those arms. The only thing which we found was cellulitis and trauma. And when we've done the multivariate analysis, we found that the only uh, significant factors were the classic prognostic factors for lymphedema, BMI more than 25, axillary lymph node dissection, regional lymph node radiation, and cellulitis. So we concluded in this study that there was no significant association between precautionary measures with arm volume increase because we saw that those recommendations were supported with few evidence-based data. And we saw that the study generated evidence that brought some reasonable doubt. There is a little bit of doubt here uh, regarding these uh, burdensome guidelines. So we started to ask the question, where did these measures come from? So we did a literature review, and we found 85 papers talking about these precautionary measures. Only eight of them were prospective, and from those eight, only four demonstrated some statistical correlation with infection, sauna use, and skin puncture. So we saw that there is a paucity of high-level scientific evidence supporting or refuting these precautionary measures. And there were also some conflicting results. And the key thing here is that most of these studies came from the lymph node dissection era, where 100% of patients had lymph node dissection. So we are taking these precautionary measures from this era and apply it to today, when only 20% of patients undergo lymph node dissection. And this number is going down, because even with women with positive sentinel node, we don't do lymph node dissection in a lot of them. We replace this with, with uh, regional radiation. Now, more than 20% of our patients have bilateral mastectomies. People talk about this. So where will they go? The right is taken, the left is taken. Where will they go? And imagine the anxiety they will go through. So those restrictions may prove especially problematic from this population. And at certain points, they will need a blood to be drawn. They will need a blood pressure. And then you will shift all this to the leg. So there is a pressing need to provide high-level data, level one or two evidence, to see are those precautionary measures are necessary or not. We need to do that. So we've done our second paper, which came up last week in JCO, looking at only women who had bilateral surgery. So it's a cohort of 327 patients with 654 at-risk arms. They were treated from 2010 to 16, and the lymphedema diagnosis was contingent upon both the clinical examination and the objective evaluation of the volume. And at Mass General Hospital, women who request contralateral prophylactic mastectomy, they undergo also sentinel lymph node mapping for some reasons. So with a follow-up of 27 months, and 95% of our patients had the bilateral mastectomy, only 5% had bilateral lumpectomy for obviously bilateral breast cancer, the two-year cumulative incidence of lymphedema was around 12%, which is reasonable. And looking at the univariate analysis, we did not find any of the precautionary measures as a risk to develop lymphedema. So these women had one arm or the other used for one of these precautionary measures. And in the multivariate analysis, we found the classic factors, BMI, lymph node dissection, and the others, as a significant risk for lymphedema. So we concluded that air travel, blood pressure readings, blood draws, injection, trauma, 
on the at-risk arm were not associated with arm volume increase in this cohort. So we went one step further. Infusion, which is very important. We looked at all women in our screening program who had chemotherapy and as a control, women who did not have chemotherapy. We had 1,200 patients with baseline measurements and followed with our measurements. Among them, 600 no chemotherapy. Around 188 patients had a peripheral intravenous catheter for their chemotherapy, around 30% of, of this cohort, and the other ones had either contralateral, uh, peripheral intravenous catheter, or central venous axis, or both. So this will be the cohort to analyze. The median number of infusion was six. And when we looked at the incidence of um, more than 10% relative volume change, the entire cohort was 7%, the no chemotherapy was 4%, but otherwise, whether you had peripheral intravenous um, axis device, 10%, whether ipsilateral or contralateral, the central is here and both are there. Really, no difference between them, whether you go to the ipsilateral arm or not. And when we've done the univariate analysis, again, the classic lymph node dissection, et cetera, were found to be significant, but when you look at ipsilateral peripheral intravenous uh, axis device versus no chemotherapy, there was no significant difference. Ipsilateral versus contralateral, ipsilateral versus central axis, or ipsilateral versus contralateral a peripheral and central axis, like we've done every combination. There is no difference. And when we've done the multivariate analysis, and we took the ipsilateral peripheral against everybody else, that just anybody who did not ipsilateral, did not have ipsilateral axis, there was no significant difference. All right, we said 10% increase in volume is too much. What about a little bit of swelling, the 5 to 10%, the mild swelling? Also, we did not find any significant difference whether you had infusion in the ipsilateral arm or contralateral or peripheral. This was in the univariate analysis, and this is in the, contra, uh, in the multivariate analysis. So we concluded again that all these precautionary measures are not associated with arm volume increase in this cohort. Although risk reduction guidelines, as described in the NLN position statement, are based on clinical common sense, clinical reasoning, but the data to support that are limited. There is no level one evidence to show that. Studies that sought answers about risk reduction guidelines were restricted in scope and predominantly small, retrospective, and single site reports with cohorts that underwent mostly lymph node dissection. It's a different era. But I want to really. Um, be careful with misinterpretation because this data made a lot of people mad. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of other people happy. Um, we're gonna be very careful. We do not recommend practice change. We just recommend to come together and initiate a study level one evidence study in order to get to the bottom of this. Are they important or are they not important? So our goal for people who are very, um, with a high level of anxiety, for people who take this really to heart, 
is to put a little bit of doubt, and we still recommend try the opposite arm. And then if there is a fibrotic vein, it's fine. I mean, those precautionary measures are not supported by uh, strong uh, scientific evidence. And I hope one day that we can custom made those guidelines. We cannot tell patients who had sentinel node the same as women who had lymph node dissection. Maybe the lymph node dissection, the original lymph node radiation, just be careful. But sentinel node, uh, I mean, should have a different tone when we, uh, when we tell them about these precautionary measures. It has to be further studied. It's time to study these precautionary measures. But there is one thing extremely important to say that wh all what I'm presenting um, does not apply to women who develop lymphedema. Any patients who had already lymphedema uh, should follow those guidelines really uh, a, a very, very carefully. <laughs> So all this for women who did not develop lymphedema. I would like to give a lot of credit to my team with all these thousands of women uh, from the day we started uh, until today. Thank you for your attention.